That's it. That's all I. Uh, oh yeah, that's all that. I got to say <laughs> about so that. I can, uh, write them down for uh, for later, like when I actually have like a portfolio and whatnot. Uh, what are like uh, websites that you'd say are essential for job hunting? Oh yeah, sure. Let me just write that up for you right now. Oh cool. Game dev map is one. This right here. Cool. And then I'll put it into Skype for just a second. And then um, I forget the name. IGTC. IGT. No. IGDA, is that what it is? Yeah, this I think this is it. Just doesn't look familiar to me. This might be, this might not be it, but I'm just going to act like it is. <laughs> um, and then some more just Gennaro ones, glass door. So that's good. And then there is... Mm, I forget the name of this other site, but it's similar to a site like Fiverr. Do you ever heard of Fiverr? I have not. Okay, I'll show you Fiverr. But it's a it's a different it's a different thing than Fiverr. But Fiverr is essentially like you can just put your shit out there and people will hire you for like however much you charge. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at this, like, but I don't think it's a lot, so I don't really recommend Fiverr. Uh, I mean, I guess you can do it and just ask for what you think is fair. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. See, so some of these people are like, for instance, this person's doing twenty five dollars for what? Like, just in general, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Three days delivery, one figure, source file, high resolution, full body, commercial use, no color, background scene. Like, these are these are good. I mean. $25 just for one of these things? Are you serious? Yeah, like I um is it not like twenty-five an hour? Or like oh that's okay. But even but even all this, like if this is like a for the whole thing, like a hundred and twenty dollars yeah, for not... potentially seven from seven days from now. Now it's not to say that they work seven days entirely, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's just say they work like a modest three hours a day. You know, that's not good. Mm. You know, but it by yeah, it's like five dollars an hour. Did we just work at McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so if you were using Fiverr, and I don't think you would do it good because of the competition is just so much lower than yours. Now, don't get me wrong; they might be in like a country where like five dollars is a fucking a lot of money mm. you know so that's why it's probably not best to compete against this <laughs> okay yeah wow 74 people this person got gets work though yeah it's cool um so um if you were to say you you were worth something as modest as 40 dollars an hour right so you you'd ask for like close to a like nine hundred dollars, right? For what this is, whatever this is. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. For whatever this okay. is, character and a background. Okay. And um, yeah, to me, that's not a good deal. Mm -hmm. Starting at fifty. So maybe it gets higher. I don't know. Maybe like when he negotiates with them, he asks for more. Yeah. <coughs> this is really good. Yeah. These are really good. <coughs> uh, I don't know about this one. 
But even even this one that's not that good. Twenty dollars is still too yeah cheap. Oh, for a sketch, okay, a full illustration. Yeah, that's even for this a hundred dollars for this. Uh, I think is actually still a little too cheap. Mm-hmm. I'd say like if I wanted something like this because this isn't as high quality. Seven days delivery. If you did this in one day, like I'm imagining, these are more like eight hours, like one hour to eight hour session, mm. like, or like three to four hours, maybe three to three to four or four to eight. <clears throat> but let's just say, <clears throat> best case scenario, you're doing it for this, then you're going to definitely reach that hundred and twenty dollars, that forty dollar an hour. But you would have to do it like within that time. So if you did like a full illustration. And you you were able to give him something like this, and you can pull this off in two hours, right? Yeah. Which I doubt. I'm sure yeah. it at least took him like like seven hours at the least. Most artists, or even four hours, if he's really proficient, and it's a character that's already designed, mm-hmm. you know. Then you know that's still pretty good right like four or five hours it's still pretty good you're not making five dollars an hour but you have to be working at that pace you can't be working at like like an act like the other guy i don't know i don't believe it like these are way detailed yeah you know these are way too detailed but i don't know you guys might find like you guys might do the math in your mind and be like you know what i could do it like i could do like a full character you know in a day and charge for like you know charge for that alone and that would be between 20 to 30 dollars an hour yeah i could totally do that you know that's up to you but i would say never go like my honest opinion never go below 30 dollars an hour Hmm. and so because uh especially because art is really hard to do (laughs) that's why they're hiring you to do it you know what i mean yeah five dollars no way man trying to compete no one's gonna no one's gonna get that see it's just two people Hmm. yeah dude just just practice don't get work for this much (laughs) just practice it's better use of your time just get better so that way you can't charge more i'm gonna see how i would do i'm gonna come on here no i'm gonna do it I'm going to make my, I'm going to do my rate, like, which is close to a hundred dollars an hour. Right. And I'm going to be like, you want this? You got to have to pay me (laughs) like, like literally like a hundred dollars starting at, you know? And, um, and then I'll tell you guys how I do. I'll, I'll fill you guys in. (laughs) Hell yeah. Cool. Maybe I'll document it. I'll be like, how does a professional artist compete against all these other artists? You know? Yeah. Um, I the next thing you know, I'm just like lucrative, <laughs> making like ten grand a week, just doing these one hour sketches. <clears throat> anyway, no, that's still a lot of sketches, like hundreds. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that much. Anyway, all right, I'm out of here. I'm gonna ask for a lot. Um, so Upwork. While I was talking, it just reminded me of the other. Oh, yeah. cool. Upwork is the other one, and this one I think is a little bit more pro. Um, but this one is definitely more like mobile web dev stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I don't think you guys will do well on here. So in this order. And then obviously the popular sites like ArtStation, DeviantArt, they have job postings. You should always check them out. Glassdoor is cool because you can just type in what you want to do. Or you can type yeah. in concept artist and i live in irvine so you can just like you live in oc too so i think right or where do you live uh new mexico what i thought you were in california oh no 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 you were never in california do an 11 hour drive to to get to Lightbox. okay so let's do new mexico let's (laughs) see what what they got in new mexico so just graphic artists odyssey systems no this is not what you think all right, what's near New Mexico? Arizona. Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> I 
All right, here you go. Cool. Still so some, just 3D modeling. Yeah, I guess like Middle America, they don't care about concept artists. Yeah. Salt so Lake City has jobs, usually. You stay out of this <laughs> with your advice. No, Colorado is popping. They got like at least like two potentials, but clearly like California. Mm -hmm. um, and even like, I think the East coast, there's a lot, but definitely like California is, is the, is the jam. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. There's literally hundreds of jobs. Damn. Um, <clears throat> but this is to be expected. Industries are wherever, however they are, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's lots. There's like five tabs. What is there? Get out of here. I'm trying to market to me. No, there's more. I think seven is not going to be the last one. So, like, how do you hunt for, like, uh, remote work if you are living in the middle of nowhere like uh, like me? <laughs> you, can, just, uh, you, can, you can actually still apply to these companies huh? and then just tell them you want to work remote. And mm -hmm. if they don't like that, then you just don't do it. But this is all, like, California. You can also, yeah. like, look at on here, and there's, like, all these international companies, and they will most likely work with you remote. Mm -hmm. And then IGDA, I think, is just more of, like, being part of, like, this uh, network which mm -hmm. will help you get more opportunities. Oh, I man. should join. I have never joined. I just know many people that are part of, I think this is it, but are part of this like large gaming network thingy. Hmm. And because of that, I've gotten many opportunities. Cool. I'm going to keep this fiber up. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I made an up work once, but then I realized it. I don't think it's useful. Oh yeah, Unity has its own. Hmm. thing too that you should want to check out like forums you know like polycount yeah. uh, art station these places go cool. to them awesome well, thanks man yeah any other questions any other questions No questions? Hey, man. There you go. Yo, uh, it's uh, it's still about the Japan stuff. Uh, How dare you? Do, <laughs> do you know, like, if there's some uh, major barrier besides the language to get to work there? Or how is the art life there? Like, from the guys you know and... Uh, what, the, what is this question? Like, the major barrier... To someone because who overseas? What, what do you mean? Like someone who's out of country? Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Like how, how does that work for someone uh, who's not Japanese to, to get there? Because uh, I know that from Canada, they had like uh, government programs to help bring people from another country to work there. Uh -huh. And this was a, a, a thing like four years ago or something. And right now they don't have this government program pro program anymore, so it's way harder to get a job there, especially for if you're not senior. So I was wondering, like, uh, from what you know, like from the guys that work in Japan, if they have something similar to that, or it's just like, oh, you're good enough, and you know Japanese, and you come here, and yeah, let's get the party done. <laughs> um, I actually don't know enough um about that to give you a good answer um mm -hmm. i will say that one of the people that works there now is is a student of mine uh but he also speaks japanese so that helps uh to your point of like the language barrier yeah um but my point is, is i don't know um i don't know like the like the things that I, I generally don't know when it comes to our industry is like the visa stuff, like international like relations, like working with companies, 
in their native country. I don't know that stuff. I've never done it. You know, uh, I know people who've done it. And from what they've told me, it's really hard. Um, but they still did it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> clearly it's possible. Um, and in the, the, the finding, like, like the consistency, um, like the thing that is consistent amongst all these people. Um, I just realized I do not want to make a fiber because I don't want someone to give me work. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've kind of done, I've already talked to myself out of this. I'm going to try to do less freelance and then do more um, personal work. Yeah. But anyway, and get back to like building my, my uh, online presence as an educator and creator. And that'll just be a waste of my time. It would be cool to do as like a one-off for like a week or something. But let me get a foothold on what I originally was going to do. But anyway, so my my friends, yeah, they always tell me it's really hard. Um, and it's usually the visa stuff because the visas are like really crazy. Like um, <clears throat> nations will have like this thing where they don't want people to come into their country right including our own and um i think this is one of the most like i i think like it's a very flawed strategy like this idea of prevention of immigrants right like to make it hard for them to get in yeah now there's you know people have their opinions on, on this obviously and they're very heated opinions usually you know but for me, uh, the rationale uh, behind why you shouldn't let internationals, because I don't know, there's no enough resources or whatever. Uh, that's just kind of weird. Uh, especially as, uh, as an American, we like waste so much. It's not even a matter of resources. It's that we waste it all over the place. We spend it in all the wrong ways and such. If we were just better about it, we would do better. But the reason why I have this principled idea is because if if you bring in there's there's two ways to think about this if you bring in people like yourself into your nation you would be paying into their taxes you would be paying into their uh, economy when you buy stuff like food and clothing or whatever right mm -hmm. and especially like in your position you probably would get like a higher paying job in that nation <clears throat> you would you would contribute quite a lot so the incentive to bringing in people is really that's kind of what you want to do. And if you really love it, then you're going to raise a family potentially there, right? And that will add more to the economy, add more to the social, the social structure. What if one of your kids potentially becomes a thing, you know, mm -hmm. and brings even more value? Um, this idea is why uh, a country like America has done so well, right? Like we're literally on the backs of immigrants. And this is why we've done exceptionally well on a lot of different things. And so um, when other nations don't do this, it's kind of bizarre, including my own. Like, it's weird. This is like this, this new narrative is going around. It's just incredibly inaccurate and um, it's hurting everybody. Uh, and so like, with that all being said, political views out of the way, that's kind of the nature of things. Like the country, like I remember when I went to Brazil to do a workshop, everything was good. And then like literally like a month before the workshop, my buddy like messages me. He's like, oh shit, dude. Like you need to have a, a you need to have a visa. And I'm like, what? Like I've traveled all over the place and never had have to have a visa just to travel. And he's like, no, nah, like I looked into it. Like someone, someone was telling me like, yeah, do they have their visas? Because if they don't have their visas, they can't come. And he was like, what? And uh, <laughs> it takes like four <laughs> weeks to get a visa. So he's like panicking because that's if like you, you expedite it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so he was like freaking out. And I was just like, that, that's crazy. And he's like, he's like, yeah, it's so weird. Uh, and then he said he found out why. And it's because like when Brazil, like, 
realize that America was like, you need a visa to just come to our country. Brazil was like, well, then you guys need a visa to come to our country. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. And so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I had to get a visa. And, and he was just like, e literally every day, he was like on that website, like refreshing the page, you know? For like check opening. it out, yeah. Yeah, for opening. And then uh, like three days in, there was an opening. And he's like, oh, I'm going to get it. And then he got it. And then he's like, all right, you guys got to go right now. <laughs> you know get this thing and then we're like all right shit and then we went and then we got it taken care of and um it's all good uh but it was just so funny but like uh i had a student uh who got a job and i think it was belgium like they really want to hire him but then he didn't have a college degree so he couldn't get a work visa to work there and uh, this was mentioning the uh, the college degree stuff uh, but it's yeah. the japanese college degree or any no college? just any college degree which oh, makes okay. it even stupider it's because it's like oh we don't care like what you did just have to have one <laughs> it's like okay yeah like and uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like it's really just like stupid paperwork stuff and and it's like this idea of like, we only want the best from your country <laughs> and mm -hmm. only the best have college degrees. And it's like, that's clearly like, obviously they know nothing about Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, Elon yeah. Musk, like all these people who are they, literally they making billions. They have no billions. idea what the best colleges are doing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the people who, like all these people that I mentioned are dropouts and are our richest people. <laughs> uh, you know, I think even the, creators of blizzard or, or college dropouts and so they could potentially not get a working visa <laughs> yeah steve jobs would not be able to get a working visa in in belgium apparently and so um it's just it's just kind of so that's what i'm saying like there's stuff like that like it doesn't make any sense it's just how the nations are because it's just like they just don't want they just like don't put up with anyone else's shit including um america's you know so it's like you gotta just look into all of that i don't know anything about japan um i do know people who work there i can ask them and see what's up um, yeah like my japanese is really 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 basic right now i i can like survive at cool. the street that's the that's the level i am but anyways cool, it's though. just uh just for me to kind of know like if you know something more than I don't have like many uh many people to talk about it anyway so anyways yeah it's there there's always there's always going to be a way you just got to figure it out there are plenty of other people who've done it you can be one of them yeah and then after the day like just keep working and eventually something will happen <laughs> yeah um i'd say if you lived in japan it would be easier yeah completely yeah um but like my friends they speak like uh they speak fluent english i think they're actually i think one of them is american um but he just happens to speak uh japanese i don't think he's japanese either i think he's chinese so he speaks chinese and japanese and english i think that's what it was i forget he speaks yeah. like three different languages fluently too it's crazy <laughs> Yeah, but when I was in Japan for the the tournament, um, you know, we all met up and hung out. It was cool. But I'll reach out to them. Yeah, let me see if I can find our message group because they're both in there that I had for that. Anyway, any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I sometimes have trouble like keeping a roadmap as to how to improve. Uh -huh. like, sometimes I'm like, and you know, I struggle with uh, working on the things that I know I'm weak at just because I guess I'm afraid of failure. But like, how do you like get past that? Um, <clears throat> hold on just a second. <clears throat> Oh, yep, I found the, the group. Oh, wait, I message clicked on the wrong one. Uh, there you go. 
Hey, friends. Long time no speak. Just trying to get that message. Hold on. Looks like I have to like load the whole conversation again. All right, I'm just messaging them right now, so that way I don't forget. Um, you are all good. All right, so say, say the last part again. I, I was listening, sort of, but not really. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I wanted to say I was, I was just wondering. Uh, so, like, sometimes I struggle keeping a roadmap of how to get where I want to be, and I am, or I struggle to focus on attacking my weaknesses head on. I guess I'm afraid of failure or something. How do you uh -huh. how do you like challenge that? How do you how do you find yourself getting out of that? Okay, so let me try to understand your question. So you're you're asking like you can recognize these issues, mm -hmm. uh, and you want to know how to tackle those issues or like how right. maybe the confidence to tackle those issues. Yeah. Yeah, so this this is where this is where whatever is inside of my mentality that just drives me um, mm -hmm. is in my advantage, and something that is not I something that I didn't have to learn, I just kind of do it. Gotcha. Uh, and what this is is that I just if I know that I have to get good at something or I have to do something, I just do it. And, okay. and the reason why I know this is not as helpful to just hear is because um, you, you're kind of admitting that that's not what you can do. You can't necessarily just do it. Um, and so you, wanna, yeah, so you want some help to kind of just get started. But that's kind of the, that's kind of the trick. Uh, and this is why it's really hard, hard to help. Um, the situation is because the reality is um, there is no nothing there's nothing else like there there are things that people will say that I thought was really that are really helpful they'll say stuff like you need to um, <coughs> last one um, thank you They'll say something along the lines of like, you know, you, you should have stuff near your bed. You should, you should, you know, do these morning exercises or whatever, whatever they may be. There's like all this kind of like self-motivating guru stuff. Um, yeah. The problem that I find that a lot of these things can never address uh, is, and this is true for me as well. This is why I don't know what the, how to answer these types of questions um, is that there, oh, my baby's freaking out. I might have to go down and lay down the snack down. This is gonna be the most. Um, he's so upset right now. I don't know what's going on. Um, so the 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 thing about all of this is that it's not complicated, right? You know. Like it just isn't. Um, you just kind of have to just do it, right? Gotcha. And and you just need to to understand a simple philosophy that the more you do something, the better you get at it. Okay, which I'm sure you already do understand. But the yep. the point I'm making is that like like even if you understand that, it doesn't mean you just will do it. And this is this is like what I'm getting at. Like I I don't know how to help people understand it any differently. The only I mean, thing I that I just have to practice failing. Yeah. So the only thing that I can do is tell you that there is nothing else. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Because yeah. I think there's, there's this hope that maybe there's like this thing that I'm telling you uh, now, and then it's, you're going to hear it and then it's going to like click and then you're going to start doing it. Right. But the reality is, yeah, but the reality is um, I'm not there with you every day. I don't see what you're working on. I don't know where you're yeah. at. I, you can tell me whatever you want, 
you know it's completely up to you to fabricate the narrative and i just have to believe you but the reality right. is yeah you just gotta do it you know and and the reason why i think that's really important to understand is because there, there really is nothing else okay there's like there is no magic trick there is no like secret advice that i know that you don't know yet other than the simple fact that uh, i know that it's super simple you know it's mm -hmm. it's like when you watch these movies oh like last night like, let me tell you a story about like last night during sketch food this is this is really great um so my friends and I, we were talking about stuff. And then my friend, we were talking about TV shows. And he's like, oh, have you watched that new Kevin Hart's thing? It's like, so good. It's like, I respect his hustle, man. I'm like, do you hear like, he only like sleeps like three hours a day and all this stuff. And I was just like, wait, hold on. You're telling me Kevin Hart only sleeps three hours a day? He's like, yeah, that's what he was saying. I was like, dude, he'd fucking lie to you. Like, yeah, no one can survive on three hours a day. Like, if that's true, Kevin Hart is on on a fucking fast track to die real soon. Yeah, he's probably. gonna die in his tons of drugs. If he's yeah, he's gonna him. yeah he's gonna die in his like mid forties, dude. He's gonna have a fucking stroke. Um, and he he's just like, and then, you know, my friend was just like laughing. He's like, yo, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, like why do I just believe him? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And then like, and I was like, you know what else I don't like about this? And I actually am a big fan of Kevin Hart. You know. Because I know he, I know he does work. I know he works hard. This is this is very admirable of him. Um, but he works the kind of hard that I think is not healthy. I think it's unhealthy to even promote this type of hard work. Right? This idea that like he's doing like all this crazy shit, and because you're not doing it, like that's why you're not successful. The reality is, you can just work at a very modest, slow, and steady pace, and do just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this there is this race called man versus horse have you heard of this no so the race is basically like a 50 mile race or some shit it's like a long ass race right and mm -hmm. it's 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 as it, the name implies it's a man men or women versus a horse or horses okay and yeah. essentially it's just a 50 mile race where a horse and people race to the 50 miles okay and it's a timed race and the horse get to cheat a little bit because the horse could take like hour-long breaks so they don't overheat and then that's counted off of their overall time mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and uh usually the horses win right but i think yeah. recently a person won and this person was running at a pace of uh, seven to eight miles or seven, seven to eight minute miles, which is pretty fast, right? That's not like no average person could just start doing that. Okay. Yeah. But like an average person, if they train for like a good few months could probably do that for one mile, you know? Yeah. So it's not even, it's not like that fast either. It's not like Olympic speeds. <laughs> okay. Right, like I think Olympics is under four minutes a mile, which is crazy. It's like three and a half minutes, super fast. Yeah. Okay, but like seven to eight minutes, the, like any of us, if you're in reasonable shape, basically you're not like incredibly overweight or obese, uh, you could probably run a seven minute mile with like some basic training in a few months. You know, so it's not yeah. like it's not that far away to achieve this. Now, could you do that for fifty miles? That's a whole different thing. Okay. Um, so uh, he, he beat these horses and that's what he did. And, and essentially the argument too, the whole, uh, this podcast I was listening to, the whole idea was that, you know, humans are, are really good at long distance, on long distance treks. This might have explained um, many of the ways that we were able to adapt. Um, you know, there is this, there's this, this idea that we were hunters and we would like chase animals down and let them like, be exhausted to death uh th this is just not accurate okay the most realistic 
Uh, because like we would like to think that like this idea of humans were just like so resilient that we would just like chase these animals to their fucking last breath, you know, for miles on end. It's a very romantic idea of like what we like prehistoric or ancient humans were like, you know? Yep. But the reality is that we were just long trek animals because we had to migrate a lot and we were scavengers. And sometimes a dead carcass would be seven miles away and we would have to walk or run over there, you yeah. know? Uh, and that's most likely the truth of what humans were like, you know? Um, yeah. We thrived on plants and we would scavenge whatever remains from an actual predator was lying around. We like to believe that we're like these extravagant hunters. That's, that's just not true. Even today is still not true, <laughs> you know? In fact, we've right. gotten worse. Intelligence is key, but definitely not able to outrun yeah. some big cat. Yeah, I mean, like, even if you caught up to a wildebeest, like, I don't think a wildebeest would eventually, like, be like, you know what, I could probably just buck this fucking human in the chest and cage his chest in, <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, we were definitely scavengers. And, and that's not a romantic idea, but that's the truth, right? Um, but yeah. here's kind of the point I'm making is that, like, it's not romantic to think that you just get spend three or four hours a day just painting, drawing. You don't have to grind to like, until <laughs> you can't see, you know, like you, you break a Wacom pen every fucking week, you know, because you're drawing so hard, <laughs> you know, like you're like, you're, you're, you're watching videos from beginning to end, you know, you're up all night studying and practicing and you're just like this crazy grind. And don't get me wrong, I did this in the very early of my, early stages of my career you know because i didn't know any better but i can tell you now that that was incredibly unhealthy you know and it was really detrimental to my health and i don't do that now and i improve uh really well on many different things with this more modest more healthy approach of just like consistent uh effort and constant effort not yeah. tons and tons of like really vigorous hard work this is the same way i do uh, I manage my health and training. Like I train the same way. I go to the gym even if I don't feel like it. And if I feel uh, tired, I just work out less. I don't do a lot. You know, I just you work out. Yeah, you know, I just work out. Um, I just work out enough. And I don't think of it any other way than like plotting out time in a long on the long span like instead of thinking about the day by day right mm -hmm. i think about the month by month like how many days out of this month did i train right right not mm -hmm. oh did i learn something today i didn't oh man you know i feel like crap i, I right. think about the long terms like and then i look at the year it's like okay out of the 365 days in a year i spent 230 of those days uh practicing some right. of them bad, some of them good, but I measure my growth by effort, not by what actually is happening, because I trust that that effort is uh, helping me get better, right? Yeah. And I think there's an important caveat that you should also be paying attention to how you're practicing, right? And right. whether you are learning something new, but you shouldn't be mad if you aren't learning something new quickly is what I'm getting at. Okay, because gotcha. it's gonna eventually happen. It just you just gotta keep at it and cre create a system and like a, a habitat of thinking where you are in this mentality. You're not in any other mentality. Well, I have learned a lot in the past month, so I really appreciate it. Um, gonna keep going. Gonna keep keep learning. Sweet, sweet. That's it. That's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's this idea that like like our media has really like pop culture has really kind of trained us to think in this more like balls to the walls attitude. And then we look at these celebrities, and that's all they do, and we're like thinking, oh man, like if only I can do like that. But the reality is that um, you don't have to work as aggressively hard i think it's not about hard work like um like or sorry it's not about like 
uh, like putting in a time and like uh, it's like hard work overall. Uh, it's just that whenever you are working, it should feel hard. You know what I mean? So like, it doesn't mean that you're spending 10 hours a day grinding, right? Like putting that hard work. It's more like, oh, the, the three hours I do actually work, it's very challenging. You know, meaning that I am uh, putting myself uh, at task. So the same idea is like when I go to the gym, even if I only work out for 45 minutes, right? Versus like an hour and a half that I'm used to working out, whatever, right? <clears throat> then it's like, well, that 45 minutes was very challenging. Like I lifted a little bit heavier than normal or I lifted more than I normally would lift, you know, like more reps. Like I broke a sweat. It was a little bit of a challenge, but not a lot. I'm not trying to go to an Olympic weightlifting competition. I'm not trying to do bodybuilding showcasing. I just want to be fit and strong. That's it. Mm. And that requires me to constantly be at the gym. <laughs> you know, that's it. Just constantly moving. If I'm not working out with weights, did I walk? Okay. I can go walk, you know, just be active. You know what I mean? these types of things. And with art, it's the same philosophy entirely. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning more and more that just like consistency is the most important thing with everything. Like yeah. Any new thing. Yeah. So the reason why most people don't do that type of stuff that I just suggested is because uh, you fail more often and it doesn't feel good to fail and yeah but that's kind of the joke right is that that's what makes people get better though is that yeah. constant failure right so yeah man i'll leave you to it well thank you yeah i pulled the gumby arm too i think i was going to be more like the distorted character but then i realized he's more humanoid so changed my mind on that Any other questions? I suspect someone's going to ask, and I know who. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, uh, someone asked something in the chat. Oh. I thought you were going to ask a question. <laughs> Not yet, but, uh, but I haven't thought of anything. Your voice, though. I was halfway right. Uh, what was the question? Can you read it out loud for me, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, AJ, you. are you doing GDC this year? Every year. I think I missed, like, one year. Um, I think it's because there's a lot of stuff that was going on in my life. But uh, this year, for sure, going. I love GDC. Uh, I think I'm a speaker, too. Which reminds me, I need to start promoting that I'm a speaker. That was part of like an email they sent me recently. Um, and I need to actually start, <laughs> I just realized like March is only a few months away. I need to start building that. Um, I need to start building the, my presentation. I need to put that on my calendar right now before I forget. Let me go to my calendar. And then let me, let me do this. Presentation prep. And we'll put it at 10.30. And then we'll do it on Sunday. No, it probably makes more sense to move it. There you go. There you go. Um, my cousin and his fiance invited me to crash at their place. Free housing, all spaced out. 
Yeah, see you there. I love GDC. Mostly because, um, mostly because it's a lot of uh, fun um, to meet up all my friends. My year, the year of the rat. My friends from Japan just wrote me. Add some questions on my Japan locals. How hard is it to get work in Japan as a concept artist foreigner? All right, anyway, any shui. All right, any other questions? No questions. Yeah, more uh, chat things. Uh, oh, what do, what do people say yeah. in the chat? So, uh, you guys could talk. Yeah. <laughs> the heck? Why are you guys having Esteban be your guys? Oh man, it's it's me again. Oh. <laughs> Can we talk more about it later when I have more portfolio stuff to show new characters and new things? Oh wait, what? What's going on? Uh, about the Japan stuff. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm seeing what's up with them right now. They're my humble opinion is that it all depends on your skill and Japanese level. The higher your skill level, the less Japanese you need. <laughs> they said that. Yeah. How about Visa and such? Send me um, your portfolio. I'm gonna send it to them. And see what they think. Okay. Send it to me at Zoom, and I'll send it over. Also, on the other hand of the spectrum, if you know decent Japanese and are a decent artist, you can also find work. Portfolio. Let me show you. Can I send? Can work. I send it here on the on the Zoom? Uh, yes. Okay. Who's interested? I think it would be good to show the new characters, though. Well. You didn't post them, so. Yeah, because you didn't finish the class. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses. Uh, Visa in Japan is nothing like the States. They don't have to put up money for for you. Okay. Yeah, he's giving me the lowdown right now. Yeah, Tim is my uh, old student. So he's giving me the late lowdown. So just hang in there. In tight. He's breaking it down right now. Uh, so, if you get a job, you get a visa. <laughs> okay. So there's Crazy. really, so there's no real barrier, I guess, in Japan. If they want to hire you, they'll hire you. And that's. That's what I'm talking about. I will say that Japan also has a high standard of work. So that means it's the type of place that puts a lot of stress on their employees. They have something called blacklist companies, I think, or black companies. I think that's what they call them. I forget exactly. But the right. idea, yeah, but the idea is that like if you're labeled a black company, that you are like, really you your employees grind hard i think i got it i think i think that's what it is i don't remember exactly what it was but it's something along those lines yeah 
Yeah, it has nothing to do with like ethnicity. It's just like the colors, black and white. Like if you're a white company, you were just, um, you are not like that. You're more probably relaxed. Yeah, Japan and many other Far East nations are heavy grind cultures, which I've talked about in the past. I don't think it's a really good system of, of work, but it yields results for sure. Yeah. For sure. But the question I, I always have is... Can I, can I talk to, uh, to this guy with like... Uh, can I message him if it would be okay? Yeah, I can ask. Yeah, but just let me see what's up right now first. Um, I can ask. Uh, I'm waiting for the other guy to respond too. I would say shit looks good, but I ain't a concept artist. I'll let the other people comment on that. Okay, 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 okay. No, hang tight. I'll add him to this chat. Thanks, Tim. Miss your face. Got to play darts again. All right. I mean, Back to the States to visit. If so, let me know. Anyway, all right, back to QA sesh. All right, so uh, another question, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, when uh, you are like applying to freelancer, or someone emails you for like a freelance job and all that, and they send uh -huh. you like a contract, what what are things you should look out for to notice if like that contract is like sketchy or is like taking advantage of you or like whatever? Yeah, great, great question. Team, it's, it's a lot of people. <laughs> Well, not all of them are from Japan. Some of them are, okay, okay. they just happen to be in Japan. It was when I was out there for the competition. Um, but really there's only a couple of guys in there that are, um, that live in Japan still and work there. Uh, anyway, so. Thanks a lot anyway. Yeah, yeah. So um, the first thing is make sure you're getting paid what you, <laughs> what you're asking for, make sure that's in the contract somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. And very clear, like on delivery or whenever you're, you're invoiced, you know, or whenever they're invoiced, for instance, if like, Hey, you know, I want to work on this project. This is how much I expect to get paid. Uh, and I'm going to invoice you guys, you know, every week. And usually people will be like, all right, cool. So then you invoice them every week. And then they'll pay you that. And usually they'll have like something like, "Hey, we're planning on working with you guys. For, we're working with you for five weeks." So then you'll rate, prorate how much that would be in the contract. So they know that's the limit that they're willing to pay. If any further notice type of thing, they'll extend it, whatever, right? But like, let's say you're charging like a thousand dollars a week, whatever, and you're working five weeks, five thousand dollars max. And that will be in the contract that they're going to pay you for about five thousand dollars worth of work. Mm -hmm. Um, and if there's more work to be done, then, you know, you guys will talk about it then. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so you do that. And then after that, you want to look for intellectual property type stuff. So most likely if you're working with a freelancer and they are hiring you, it's their intellectual property and you are designing for their property. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they should own it. It's their artwork, right? You're just doing it for you. It's just like if you buy a burger or if you buy a couch, right? From like Ikea or burger from like Burger King. It's was once theirs, now yours, <laughs> okay? 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of what they're doing. They're buying your art from you so that they can use it for whatever they need to use it for. Yeah. Right. They're buying your ideas. They're buying your vision. So that's why you should be, that should be clear in the contract that that's yours. Now, this is probably not true for you, but if you do, let's say originals, mm-hmm. like let's say you do like original sketches, like on paper or you painted markers. Uh, most of you guys will probably never do this. I have never done this. Uh, actually, that's not true. I've been like once or twice, but it was like out of necessity, not out of like, that's my process. Mm-hmm. Um, then you should charge um, to own the original too. Oh, yeah. Uh, if not, you can own the original. You can do whatever you want with it. It is yours. I mean, the IP is theirs, like the characters inside of the original, but like you can sell it, resell it if you wanted to. Um, like there's a guy who worked on Blizzard and he had done these original paintings for the illustrations and he retained all rights to his original paintings which is super smart especially for blizzard artwork because he did like a lot of world of warcraft characters mm-hmm. like on this really badass illustration and the, the the game and everything came out and all the art so then he can now like put it on like ebay or whatever mm, cool and it's like the original art from the original artist and sell it for like really large amounts like ten thousand dollars yeah. because there's going to be a rich World of Warcraft fan that's going to be like, I want that motherfucking original painting. <laughs> yeah. You know? <clears throat> and so, but that's it. That's like the only other thing. Um, if you, if they are working on something that's like a little bit more looser, like they're kind of like want you to kind of come up with the style from based off of your own work, like it's kind of your own personal work that they're inspired by. Mm-hmm. And you might want to like, retain ownership and and make it more of like a licensing deal hmm. um i don't know much about this because i generally just do work for others yeah right like i never like license my artwork very often and whenever i do like whenever people are like hey can i like use your thing for like this 3d model that i'm making i'm usually like yeah as long as you credit me i don't really care outside of that mm-hmm. um but like if it's like a major company wanting to buy a character of mine which this is my goal for this year is to kind of start to be in that world um then yeah i would license it meaning Mm -hmm. that i still own it they just license it to them Uh, and licensing contracts can be all sorts of things licensing could just be like hey you know you guys get to use it but it's still mine um you know i still own it and so i still get money from that um but like it's theirs for that amount of time. This is what happened with the Spider-Man franchise. This is why Sony still owns that license. Mm-hmm. That's why Marvel cannot make a Spider-Man movie without Sony's approval. Yeah, you know, because it's like a license within a license. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> what's happening there. That's why, like, I remember when people were like really pissed at Sony because Sony was just like, "No, like you guys gave us like a shitty deal." we want more money if you guys want to keep using Spider-Man and Disney's like, or Marvel's just like, but we already put him in like all these movies and like, mm-hmm. like now like integral to like the whole Marvel cinematic universe. And they're like, yeah. So mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't tell you guys to do that. You guys came to us, <laughs> you know? And I'm, I'm, I actually agree with Sony in this situation, you know, like Marvel, Disney, can share some of that money and to be clear sony did make some of the best spider-man movies too like the first two sam raimi spider-mans were great and actually put superheroes on the map like even more Mm -hmm. right spider-verse hands down is still my favorite spider-man movie so fuck y'all marvel like you guys (laughs) you guys better work with sony they it's not like they don't know how to make a good spider-man movie either like don't let's not look at the third spider-man movie and maybe the first uh new spider-man movie that came out with andrew garfield i think the second one was fine they actually do know how to make good spider-man movies it's not like they treated the character with disrespect like the final like the fa- uh, fantastic four franchise mm-hmm. right um but that's that's the power of like ip ownership george lucas still gets a check i think mm-hmm. from every freaking sale of star wars anything and he literally is 
been running on that for years, even before he sold it to Disney, right? I don't think they have full ownership. I don't know if this is true, but even if that's true, if he sold it entirely to them, right? Uh, it still kind of doesn't matter <laughs> because he made so much money from all the previous Star Wars stuff, you know? Yeah. And he's just, I don't know what he's doing right now. He's just probably <laughs> just playing Candy Crush. <laughs> Oh, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, invoices also. Like, how do you yeah, sure. like write those out even? Like, I, I have like no. Oh, so hold on, before we get into that, so yeah. um, just because I kind of rambled a bit. Um, so, so the contract, you just gotta make sure you're gonna get paid. That they know that they're gonna get paid, and you gotta yeah. know who who owns what. That's yeah. kind of like cliff notes there. Okay. Cool. Um, and if all that's said and done, then you should be good. Awesome. Um, if they don't have a contract. For you, you should make your own contract. Yeah, uh, how do you? You, yeah. you could just go online. You could just go online and find a template contract, like a contractor cool. contract. It's not as challenging as you think. Um, there's a website for us Americans. There might be one for everybody else who's not in America. It's um, Rocket Lawyer. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's where you want to go. Cool. Oh, you know, I just realized I didn't share with you all those websites. I'll just write them down. I can just look up Google. Well, I did. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I did it for for whatever reason. Yeah, Rocket Lawyer. That's another one. Circle. I mean, like a lot of the stuff you can just Google. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Google, like make your own contract, and I found this website. And I was, oh, this works great. And then you just fill in the information that's just with your information. Yeah. Or you can like print it out and get like a doc, uh, a Word doc version of it, and then just go in there and change the fine print, mm. you know, yourself. Like a contract, it just needs to cover those bases. Rocket Lawyer does a really good job of having like the proper wording for a lot of things you might not understand that mm. makes that puts you in protection. But it's honestly, it's also supposed to protect your client. Like the client should yeah. also not get; they should also want a contract so that they don't get fucked over by you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so um it's it's good for everyone to have something but anyway <clears throat> any shway oh yeah uh, invoices <laughs> so okay. invoices yeah um it's the same thing actually you could just google that right yeah uh, and then what i would say yeah what i would say in invoices all you got to do is have a couple things in there um, and usually your contract, like your company might want to like, they want you to have stuff in your invoice for their own purposes, mm -hmm. but to save you time, the things you would need in that invoice, I'm going to just write it down in Skype, just copy it. Um, you need obviously your name, mm -hmm. you need, um, your address, your phone number, right? And then the company's information that are similar their address name address phone number if they have one right mm -hmm. these are also things you should have from them okay uh you should determine if you're doing hourly or daily or weekly rates and charge by that in your invoice and you could just i can just find an invoice and show you what it looks like maybe and then you would need to have some sort of disclaimer on the bottom of like a net pay of 21 days, right? And then you also would put in that something along the lines of like every day after uh, a percentage interest mm -hmm. of like 5% or something crazy, maybe less than that. But like basically like, so every day that they do not pay you for like, like say it's the 22nd day, and obviously, you know, if you're working with somebody you like, you respect, and you don't think that they're just fucking you over, you don't have to take that. But like, it's in the invoice, so mm -hmm. then they can be like, and they if they accept the invoice, then you, you can be like, all right. And so then, uh, twenty the twenty second day, you can be like, all right, five percent of my um, what is owed is this now. So if you had a thousand dollars, right? So then they owe you fifty dollars now. Like a thousand fifty dollars. If then twenty third day you say a thousand a hundred dollars, right? You just keep adding that five percent on there, right? Of the initial value that was owed. Okay. 
uh, for them. It's kind of like a late fee. And you could put a maximum on there, right, before you pursue with like a lawsuit. Mm-hmm. But you can always just talk to them about it too. You can like knock it all off if they just give it to you right straight up, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, that should not happen. It really does happen. And even if it gets close to that day, I usually, I usually don't really excuse. It's only like to really like if it's been like several months and I'm like, all right, now I'm going to like go for it for the heart, <laughs> you know, but yeah. it rarely happens. I mean, it actually never happens. It used to happen a lot in the beginning when I didn't have invoices or contracts. Mm. And that's, that's just because I just didn't know how to deal with this stuff. But if you have a contract, you put in your invoice, these things, uh, it should work out. Uh, and then your payment, you should have like, whether however you can get paid, you can do a PayPal account there. Yeah. You should do your routing and your account number to your bank account, routing and account numbers, right? So that they can wire you directly. You'll need information from your bank. You'll need the name of your bank address and something called a Swift code. Hmm. from your bank the ad name and address so like if say bank of america whatever the address of the bank of america that you bank at or the one that you open the account at if you don't remember i don't think it really matters you can just do one that's a little close to you um and the swift code does matter it has to be the one i think you do have to kind of know which bank in your area i think they all share the same swift code but i don't know for sure but like the swift code is specifically international so that they can wire you uh, internationally. Hmm. Uh, but if you're doing domestic, like if you're working with a company in the States, they just need your routing and, uh, account number in your bank. And they'll, cool. do, they'll take care of it real fast. And I think the address helps if it's the address because then they can directly do it to that branch. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pretty much it. And I, I, I like to put an invoice number just so I, if I keep invoicing them, I know I keep track for myself. Um, but like I said, if you just Google invoice yeah. templates, like you'll find like some good examples. I guess you can make your own here. I just use Google Spreadsheet. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't really, I just like Google Spreadsheet. I just like make it look like this. Mm-hmm. This is almost exactly <laughs> what my invoice kind of looks like. Oh yeah, cool. date and stuff like this. You know, so yeah. for instance, like, yeah, like, um, this is the company and this is, this will be you, your address, right? This is the company's, right? This is, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't do the ship to, but I do bill to, yeah, like this. Uh, and then the invoice number, yeah, invoice date. I don't know what the PO number is, uh, or due date. I don't do these two because I do the payment is due within 15 days thing. You know, mm-hmm. like these, the terms and conditions, this is the only thing that's missing is how to pay me. Yeah. Right. But all the other stuff, this, these are all pretty much. Yeah. So here's, here's 40,000. Yeah. Nice dude. <laughs> it's good old Ze- Zeichler. <laughs> yeah, man. Zilkler. Zeichler. Yeah. Uh, but see, they even have like a PayPal like click right there. But that's this is like a little bit more like I don't think companies will pay this way. They will do it through their own accounting. Yeah. But but yeah. Say- I mean, like all these work. I don't really see one that's like so bad. Like you want all that information I just told you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, the the basic like I guess uh, like order of events would be uh, let's just say that this is like something super small, like I'm uh, getting commissioned to do like in like somebody <coughs> D character or whatever, mm-hmm. um, where it's like, uh, you know, you, they you could do them. like an email confirmation on the contract. Like as long as something's written and agreed upon, yeah, you can take that to court and win uh, yeah. the case. As long as there's enough documentation that you're working like a paper trail, but yeah. having a official documentation allows you to win it even harder. Yeah. Like the smaller stuff, I guess what you're saying, like, yeah, it's probably not as big to have like all that stuff, uh, specifically the contract stuff. But like, Mm -hmm. I would say, because it's like $50, you're just like, okay, Mm -hmm. it's pay me $50. It's like a small claims court, too. It's not that big of a deal. But like, um, but I would say uh, you should still invoice them, though. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know? Yeah, so you do that when uh, you accept the, the job, like immediately, not like after you do the job and then you send it, it's like... Yeah, you know, I, I yeah. actually I actually will do the job and then send the invoice, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, I invoice after the work has been done. Yeah, because you know, like, the amount you worked and then you can yeah. price it. Yeah, that makes and sense. I usually do it weekly if I'm allowed to. Um, so I'll do like a weekly invoice and then get paid uh, usually the following week. And then while that's happening, I'm working on the next week's worth of work. Cool. Awesome. All right. Any last questions? Going to wrap it up here. I got one. So right. um, is it common to like find that you can't, you're not allowed to do any if you're under contract with a concept art company like Blizzard or mm -hmm. Bioware or something that you are not allowed to do any art outside of the uh, work. I've never, yeah, I've never been in that circumstance. So that is, I don't know anyone that's been in that circumstance. Mm, okay, uh, I would say that is very odd. That is not common. <laughs> yeah, my buddy who was. Uh, a texture artist apparently is not allowed to use uh, photos or Photoshop for like anything other than their work. And I'm like, how do you even develop? How do you get better? <laughs> yeah, that's not. Uh, that's not. I've I've worked at companies. Okay, so it's too. not common at all. Yeah, I've worked at companies where I had like eye retina scan to get in. You know what I mean? Like they're like on lockdown. Ugh. Like, like, and the door would unlock, and I'd go in, and then like the computers, we had to use their computers because everything was like on lockdown. Um, this company worked for Disney. Dang. This is kind of how they wanted to roll. Everything's super hush hush. Uh, but I could still do like mm -hmm. personal work. Like if I had my iPad, I would just go out and just on my iPad. Like they just like yeah. like that is reasonable. Like whatever I'm working for, like from that client cannot be seen by anybody else i get that there's no real issue there it's not a conundrum <laughs> you know but right but, but this idea that like <laughs> you can't even like use a software outside of work uh or i'm sorry within work on, on anything else it's kind of weird um yeah i, I would be I would ask him if he could do it outside of work. Like if he could use Photoshop just to work on his personal stuff outside of work. If in right. his company, I, I can see a little bit of rationale there, but outside, I don't get it. That's his personal time. Like if it was the right. company's Photoshop, then yeah, I think again, that makes some reasonable sense. But if, if it's his own version, like again, what the fuck? Like they don't own it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I don't think it's actually legal. Okay. For them, for him to not be able to like use other tools. Maybe it was their version. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a little bit more nuanced than you're implying. Maybe it's not so like black and white. Yeah. Never use Photoshop for right. anything. <laughs> not allowed. Yeah, I would. I would question that greatly. Yeah, I. I honestly think it's illegal okay. too. I don't think they could do that if if this is in the states. I think that's quite illegal. And he should fight mm -hmm. with his rights. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Well, it's been fun, chaps. I appreciate you all. You guys have been all great and excellent. I'm very proud of all everyone's progress. I wish you guys a happy new year. Uh, have a great, great rest of the year. Enjoy 2020. I'll see you guys around for sure. Keep painting. Don't be strangers with one another. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.